Woody Allen's Decades in Film, a podcast about the incredible filmography of one of the most prolific and most controversial filmmakers of our time. From Red Naxella Studios, A and B in Hong Kong, we are your hosts, William Melvin and Q. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, whatever time you're listening to us, uh, we are what Woody do, and we just uh, we just saw uh, 1983 Zelig. And mm-hmm. uh, Kuya Q has questions again, uh, but uh, <laughs> let's 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 lay it out. So before I before I go into um, discussing this film, uh, let's let's just uh, give everyone else an overview of yeah. what uh, Zelig was. So 1983 Zelig finds Woody Allen playing the title role Leonard Zelig, a human chameleon in the Roaring Twenties. He is diagnosed with a bizarre disorder or condition, which allows him to transform to whoever or whatever group he's with. The film also chronicles him being treated by Dr. Eudora Fletcher, played by Mia Farrow. So this is a <laughs> this is the it second is... Mia Farrow movie that I've seen. Yeah, yeah, second Mia yeah, Farrow, yeah, yeah. and also I think the second mockumentary. If yes, I'm not yes, I was, yeah. I was, I was so, going to say, yeah. Yeah, this is kind of like a like a um, a takeoff from uh, what we what he was trying to do in uh, mm-hmm. take the money and run, and uh, I think this is uh, one of his uh, richest films in terms of like technical uh, uh, you know the technical things that were used mm-hmm. in this film and we can also discuss uh, a lot about the theme of this film and where it went and uh, what you think of it the only thing i know after uh, seeing the movie is that uh, you, you told me you have mixed feelings about this film <laughs> but this is actually one of my my top favorites among really? uh, uh, among woody's filmography okay and uh, we can you know we can in- exchange insight Sure. About that, I think this is the fourth time I've seen uh, Zelig. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, what are your first impressions? Let's uh, let's start with your uh, with your opinions on it. Okay. Uh, well, going into it, uh, for for those of you who have just who have not uh, heard any episode of What Would He Do, uh, basically this is a blind viewing of myself, and uh, so this is a, a podcast where we kind of like. Uh, just jam uh, our opinions about it. Well, William being the foremost expert on the films, and me being the idiot <laughs> that I am with Woody Allen's films. Uh, so we just uh, so we watch the film before we discuss it, and then we we talk about it right after. So my first impression was I have no idea. Um, <laughs> there was nothing. There was nothing for me to be to have an impression with because. The name Zelig doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. right, right. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. what is this movie about? This? And yeah. Uh, yeah. coming into it, I was I was actually quite surprised with um, the the quality of the film. This felt more like a mockumentary more than Take the Money and the Run, and this uh, felt more periody, if that's mm-hmm. even a word. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. and I'm I was I I was actually quite floored with the amount of archival footage that they've used, and I was I was going to ask you how how they how they managed to kind of like put Woody Allen in those <laughs> in those like because it's easy to photos. do today, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very easy, easy to, to do, do today. today. It, yeah, I mean, yeah. But uh, like, of course, huh. <laughs> they, they did it the old school way, you know. Um, I can't remember where I where I read this thing, but they used very, very, very um, funny sounding techniques. If we hear it today, <laughs> like you know, they 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 literally stepped on the film stock. Oh and, wow! And things like that. Um, just so, just so it's, Egypt, it's very, is it? Wow. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's one of the reasons why I love this film so much. Um, uh, it's it's very um, it's very cleverly done, uh, mm-hmm. and and 
um, I think if we go back to our last episode about Midsummer Night's sex comedy, that felt like really a, th- that felt like a resting period in terms <laughs> yeah. of like, you know, in terms of like things he wanted to do. Although mm-hmm. it's still a, it's still an achievement in and of itself, you know, uh, the the set pieces and and you know, um, but but this one is a bit more adventurous for Woody in terms of tone. I think this is the much more logical follow up from uh, Stardust Memories. You know, it's yes. very it's very like adventurous. It, it's very experimental, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so like Midsummer Nights is like kind of like a like, like a blip. Uh, in between that, um, you know, you know what? Uh, I think this is the first movie that I wanted to kind of like go into the trivia portion of IMDb <laughs> <laughs> because the other, the other, the other films, all I, all I went into were the quote sections just to take a look at the the dialogue that I missed. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a good thing that you uh, brought that up that uh, Midsummer Night Sex Comedy was a break because according to this, uh took so long to match Woody Allen to the newsreel footage mm. that that he Allen uh, Woody Allen managed to film and complete a Midsummer Night's sex comedy <laughs> <laughs> while they were waiting for this one so it while was, they were it, yeah yeah so this was meant to be the follow up of 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 uh, Stardust Memory yeah yeah and in the time that it took to complete this he uh, he later claimed that there was no mechanical way to age it so they would either scrunch the negative up or stomp on it. <laughs> so that's that's very very interesting to be honest. Uh, With and, the help uh, of Gordon Willis, the cinematographer, <laughs> I think. Yeah. This 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 film is it's it's very amusing and it's very telling of the the time that it was being told. I mean, it was in the eighty in it, it was filmed in the eighties and yeah. uh, for some reason it felt to me the character of women in this film mm. felt to me like they were being mocked i think it represents the time this is the 20s that we're talking about and uh you know the, the usage of like uh, she's a doctor but you always have to put the, wo- uh, the woman doctor, doctor. <laughs> right yeah and, and, and it's, it's always like okay she did this achievement but she's also very pretty and it took her months <laughs> it's it, it's very it's 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 um you you got that right but only because it's trying to it's it's trying to comment on the way of thinking the period yeah the period you know it's it's the 1920s okay. and he was capturing okay, okay. that uh, that side of it that that, that um, okay yeah. that makes more sense now but yeah i mean uh, the, the 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 while watching it i mean i was like that's why i told you i was having mixed feelings about it because yeah. well for one i'm not really a big I, i'm not really a huge fan of of documentaries because so did you struggle watching this because it felt was, like a documentary right i was struggling a bit and particularly for those uh portions where they were just talking and talking about mm-hmm. archival footage and right. i mean it was amusing in, in in some parts to me because i was kind of like I was always, I mean, being being a visual artist in in 2021, I was oh, I was very in awe on how they kind of like superimposed <laughs> Woody <laughs> Allen in this in these pieces. And yeah. I mean, obviously, there's there's some pieces, uh, some scenes and sequences in the film where you're like, <laughs> it, it. I mean, it, it it is a comedy, right? So like when. He, <laughs> <laughs> when he became fat, <laughs> when, he, when, he, when he became black, when he became yeah, Chinese, he became Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> obviously that those kind of warranted a lot of laughs. Yeah. But it was very interesting the way that they structured this. I mean, at the at the end of it, this mockumentary still kind of managed to be a somewhat love story between yeah. Uh, yeah. Mia Farrow's character and yeah. Leonard Zelig. Yeah, right. and that that for me was was pretty. It's pretty cool, how yeah. how they kind of like uh, resolve that into that ending, and uh, <laughs> and it's kind of ironic as well to me. I don't know if if this was really the theme that they were kind of like gunning for, but the way that he was being depicted as a chameleon, yeah. that he can you know just be. <laughs> whatever <laughs> and what uh, whoever and whatever whoever that he wanted whatever, yeah. that his main motivation was just he wanted to be liked right yeah yeah 
to be and like yet, and then I, I I think uh, sorry just just to add to that sure because there's a there's a there's a psychoanalysis scene um, early on in the film where he says uh, so it's not as one dimensional as to be liked he also said he wants uh, it it made him feel safe so it was his defense I I would assume yeah, like right, his defense right. mechanism yeah to yeah. to hide in in plain sight basically right is to be right. like normal basically yeah it's to be <laughs> to be one of the crowd yeah, but right. it's 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 kind of ironic to me that when he had that condition active it was amazing for everyone when he was trying to be everyone else yeah but when he started delving into normalcy mm. people started to lose interest Right, right, right. <laughs> right. So it's, I'm, it's I'm that, sure it, that he was gunning for that. I think. Yeah. So yeah. that that for me was kind of like a nice kind of uh, social commentary on how people wanting to be. It, it's kind of a reverse thing that how mm. people want to be like a star, like stand out, like how how you know how today's in today's age where. Everyone wants to be the star, wants to be viral. Everyone wants yeah. to be, you know. And then there's this guy who just wants to be normal. Yeah. <laughs> and he, and he tries his best to just hide away and just be whatever. Just so that people won't notice. And yet, that's the key to him getting, getting his, his, his shot in the, in the limelight. And that speaks to me today so powerfully like yeah. people lose sight of that like today that you know he 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 put it so bluntly in that speech that he made that when he was made to speak to the kids like what can you say just be yourself yeah. be <laughs> yeah yeah because i was once a member of the reptile <laughs> yeah, yeah. now i'm not anymore <laughs> so that 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 to me was kind of like okay okay this 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 if you watch this today it would it's it, it might be quite relevant <laughs> yeah, yeah. in well, today's I, time i think it is uh very uh relevant you're you're on point uh, because you know um this thing is uh this film is really about you know the human tendency to just adapt and and mm. not think for themselves i mean it it just fits that you know ultimately it led him to joining the nazis and and <laughs> you know being part of that crowd and, and it was much discussed you know because because that's where that kind of thinking fits you know, you're you're yes. gonna end up, you know, <clears throat> agreeing to everyone. So you're gonna be, you're gonna fit right in the fascist society where you just want to be um, a face in the fit crowd, in. agreeing to to, to <laughs> yeah. someone, right? And, and I think that's very um, that's very brilliant. Before we continue today's discussion, we'd like to invite everyone to follow us on our channels and social media accounts. What Would He Do podcast is available on Spotify, Anchor.fm and other major streaming platforms. Yes, you can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. All you have to do is visit our homepage at www.williamelvin.com slash what would you do for all our links. Or you can email us and we'd love to have a quick chat with you at what would you do at gmail.com. I'm amazed in a lot of things uh, in this movie. Uh, number mm -hmm. one is like the way, uh, of course, on a technical level, they were con combining newsreel footage, old mm -hmm. footage. They, they're putting Woody in there. Um, also, they're putting real people uh, to be interviewed. I mean, real historians, real journalists. Uh, oh, really? Sontag were they? Was here. Yeah, wow, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah. So some of them are real, like real historians. The historian uh, who... Uh, who was portrayed as who wrote about him uh, interpreting <laughs> Zelig? That's a real historian. Really? Um, okay. Yeah, Susan Sontag is a journalist, um, and Bricktop, the the club owner from mm -hmm. the 1920s. Uh, she was that's the real Bricktop, uh, and she wow. really owned a a uh, a club in the 1920s in Paris, and they're mixing it up with a lot of actors, you know. 
it's it's blurring the line between documentary and and uh, and and, and comedy <laughs> and comedy yeah, yeah. and it's just it it it's just brilliant i think i think it, this is the kind of form that this kind of story uh really fits in like i don't imagine any other way for this story to work uh in a non mockumentary thing of course you could do it like you know he's a comedian of course, and okay. stuff but it's like this is the perfect setup for it you know um <laughs> he he's from the 1920s and of course like like the narrator just blurts out that it's 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 really a shame that all the records are lost you know <laughs> it's like it's like <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah it's very much like you know it's 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 playing around with the with the with the form um <laughs> also real music alongside uh, yes. original music with the was, was yeah, used yeah, yeah, yeah. um and it sounds like it it sounds like from that time <laughs> exactly. right exactly the jazz age <laughs> is here and, 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 and the dance moves <laughs> yeah. oh that, that I, moves. I think that's my my favorite scene in in in, 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 <laughs> in this movie the the dancing thing when they were like yeah, you yeah, know yeah. They, they're dancing with the tongue and the chameleon <laughs> and, and the chameleon and like, dance yeah and and can you imagine this like they shot that new footage and inserted it in, in into in one. the archival footage. Yeah, and, oh and my god, just, that's it's, amazing! It's just amazing. Uh, <laughs> of course, the music was amazing. Um, it, Chameleon days, and you know, it, it got stuck in my head for days when I first saw this film. Um, uh, another trivia <laughs> is that the 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 singer uh, they mm-hmm. hired for that song for Chameleon days was the voice of Betty Boop. Oh it's, really? Uh, I I think her name is May Castell. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So if yeah. you go back to that song, uh, it it really sounds like it's Betty Boop singing. Um, <laughs> that that's why this is my probably among my top five. I don't know. Wow, uh, it's, wow. It's it's okay. gonna change up. It's gonna change up because we're we're seeing the movies again. Um, yeah. and of course, like. There, there are different flavors to the Woody Allen films, and 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 I think this is like a perfectly balanced Woody Allen film in that it was, it, it was talking about like you know um really relevant, uh worthwhile things, commenting on the human Correct. condition yeah. and social condition, Correct. but mm-hmm. it's also like it's very it's it it's very heartwarming, it's it's charming, and it's like it it just gets you by the heart. I mean, it, you know. Uh, I guess, yeah. I yeah, guess, I, I guess. mean, how I feel is that you know, it, it, as you said, it turned into like a basic love story between me and <laughs> yeah. and, and Woody, and you know, a happy ending, and um, th- that's that's what makes this. Uh, I think again, we're gonna go back to if if people are considering Woody as a prototype romantic comedy mm-hmm. filmmaker then this is a i think this is a good example of what you can give the audience you know it's like it's still a love story you know it's it's charming correct, you, correct. Know, you see them you see them grow you see them yeah you see yeah. them get fond of each other and <laughs> but it's still a, an interesting concept it's i mean uh it's it's cool to kind of like see how they kind of like progressed and then there, there are the bits where uh, Woody Allen, uh, Leonard Zelig would disappear, and and the yeah. chase goes on. And then <laughs> there's like scenes where the police is trying to find him, and they they find him in like headlines and whatever. And then that that sort of that's that section of the movie where people are just ganging up on him, where oh he married me, yeah. Uh, or, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I found that really funny. Uh, there was this. There was this line that uh, one of the guys uh, said, and <laughs> uh, where is that? Uh, so one of the one of the, bl- the that black woman, <laughs> yeah. and this is this is particularly funny to me because I was just researching about the guy that he referred to. <laughs> So he said, she said, he married me up at the First Church of Harlem. He told me he was the brother of Duke Ellington. Oh, the musician, right? He's yeah. a musician. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a yeah. jazz musician. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, it's just stupid. But 
you know how how that's 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 very interesting where it, he just depicted how current cancel culture themes are built on like this oh, is yeah. this is the yeah. <laughs> yeah. this is just you know when 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 this when the lynch mob started like talking about oh he 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 abandoned me and then yeah. this is this is they just gang up on him with with one one thing after the other <laughs> that, that funny thing was when the when the his film studio bought the rights to his autobiography the they gave him back man. half they of his life back half of his life <laughs> Because he already funny. spent half of the money, so he can all he can just uh, have his, half, of, half his of his life, life back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> even he, even he was... the even the portrayal of how they romanticize the the story on film, right? You know, it, it looks different <laughs> yeah. from what really happened. Also, one of my favorite scenes in here is the Hitler rallies. Scene. Oh right, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, he's he's. He's right hidden in the, uh, you know, in at the, the crowd, at the front row of the the yeah, crowd, yeah. and you just like you just see him waving at at Mia Farrow, and <laughs> you shift to the crowd, and Mia Farrow is there, and and it's just it it's just amazing. I think I w- I was kind of like thinking, did they film an impersonator of Hitler to do the scenes? And I was like. I don't know. How I they don't did this. think so. Yeah, I, no. I, I think because I've seen I've seen clips of this rally, and it's exactly yeah. this. I think. Yeah, <laughs> and and apparently, apparently, uh, based on this uh, trivia section, as well, um, the famous people seen in the film and by way of mm-hmm. archive footage include uh, the Adolf Hil- Hitler was actually yeah, Hitler. here. So. Max Amann, Josephine Baker, Clara Bow, Fanny Bryce, Wil- Wilhelm yeah. Bruckner, James Cagney, Joe DiMaggio, Al Capone, yeah. Charlie Chaplin was here. <laughs> F. Scott Fitzgerald. Yes. This is uh, only footage, and they yes. used it here. Uh, yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's early on. That's early on in the in the film, right? When correct? Because uh, because it's F. Scott who was writing about it. He he he, <laughs> he was saying, you know, there's this guy yeah, 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 yeah. named Leonard Zeman or something, and <laughs> you know, he he shifts from being a Democrat to a Republican, and uh, yeah, uh, we're gonna meet F. Scott Fitzgerald again as a character eventually. Uh, obviously, Woody Allen uh, really loves. The 1920s. Um, he was born in that era, so he's F. gonna Scott go back to this well um, sometime again later. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the, the 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 old footage and the newsreel footage, it just fits together. Um, even the baseball scene that uh, that was funny, <laughs> right? It, it, I think it was with him Ruth. just standing in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> and he was just standing with a bat uh, with, with yeah. some. It, it's just. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because I think this is this film is a technical marvel for 1983, yeah. uh, and it's also very funny. If you're enjoying our discussion, another perfect companion for your Woody Allen film marathons is the Woody Allen Pages podcast at www.woodyallenpages.com. It's a great resource for film by film details that would surely add to your Woody Allen viewing experience. So check them out. I remember last episode when you mentioned um, uh, when you mentioned about Zelig, and yeah. you men- you mentioned uh, Forrest Gump. Yeah, that was yeah, what right. I thought. Yeah, I mean, right. uh, while I was watching that, I was oh okay, that's why Forrest yeah. Gump yeah. was such yeah. a thing, because it kind of like achieved. <laughs> this is the precursor to the scenes that they wanted to do. Yeah, and it's um, I mean, looking at forrest gump and how they achieved it versus this one at the time that it was made i was like yeah. oh my god this is just amazing yeah. technically right. it's amazing I, I i'm sure it was kind of a bit easier to do it in 1992 sure. what's, yeah, what's yeah, the yeah. year of, of uh, forrest gump in the 90s forrest i assume gump? it's kind of a bit easier but um, was in forrest gump yeah uh 1994 uh forrest gump remembering forrest gump that was amazing too it kind yeah, of looked of like course. this, you know. He he he's 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 in an, in the same interview as John Lennon and and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the, that and it's like, meeting it, the president. It, it feels yeah. like this, yeah. It feels Correct. like this, and um, 
I don't think I, I think even if I didn't tell you about it, you'd you'd probably be reminded of, of Forrest. I was, Hump I was. Just I by was. seeing all this oh okay, that's where this was from. Uh, yeah, come but to think yeah, of this, it. Yeah, this this film yeah. is a precursor to, to to Forrest Gump in a lot of ways. Uh, yeah. I like Zelig. Yeah. It's just <laughs> It was it, it, it was a But it, it was grows something on you. I don't know about you, but because the first time I've seen this, I, I was already in love with it. He's gonna go back to the pseudo documentary thing again sometime soon, without okay. the without him in the movie. Uh, but I think um, he perfected the idea here. Not saying the other one coming is like uh, an inferior movie. It's a very very mm-hmm. good movie. I won't say what it is. Uh, but mm-hmm. um, and I won't say what it is, and I won't say who's starring in it, so that you. Oh wow! Okay. Whoa! Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. But uh, yeah, uh, he's 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 gonna be uh, doing this structure again. Um, I'm gonna add uh, a a bit of like my notes. I thought the idea of hiring. An older woman as Dr. Eudora Fletcher was just fabulous. Um, Ellen Garrison as old Eudora Fletcher here is brilliant. She was discovered in a restaurant. This is her, this is her only film role. This really? is the only film wow, that you're gonna see amazing. this woman, and and it's just like it's so natural, and it it's just like I would have imagined like well. Mia Farrow obviously didn't turn out um, <laughs> to be just like this, but uh, Eudora Fletcher would have grown old and become this woman. Um, also, the 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 woman who played Eudora's mother, Jean Trowbridge, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken, uh, that's also hilarious. You remember that scene, right? She was interviewed and. And and uh, yeah. the yeah, interviewer yeah, was yeah, asking yeah, yeah. her like, uh, she, course, she looked uh, like she, she was struggled. drunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she, of course, your your uh, your family struggled. No, we had lots of money. <laughs> and, and actually, that that was one of the films that actually kind of uh, scenes that actually kind of like stuck to me because it was clear that the interviewer wasn't was disregarding what she, whatever she was saying. <laughs> Because it's not the narrative he wanted. Yeah, exactly, exactly, it's like, exactly. It's not the mar- <laughs> like, yeah, well, we're not going there. <laughs> and he was steering it back there, but it just keeps on. Yeah. Oh, John has a lot of problems. <laughs> she has depression. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's so funny. She's she's uh, Jean Trowbridge, and this is also her only screen role. Really? Um, also, a bit of trivia that would probably flip you out. That uh, that setting. Um, in the ending of Zelig, mm-hmm. is also the same set used in Midsummer Night's sex comedy. <laughs> <laughs> because they were filming this. Uh, That's th- why it's so overlap. familiar. <laughs> <It's> like, <yeah. laughs> I was like, ha! so he reused the thing uh, okay. to shoot that ending. Um, so, so yeah, okay, those okay. are my um, bits of trivia. I've I've uh, I've collected this from. Uh, uh, the Woody Allen Pages book, and uh, thank you, thank you so much. It's been helping us a lot. Um, I'm w- what I'm doing is that uh, I'm reading the the scene per scene notes while we're uh, watching the film, and mm-hmm. I'm getting all this information. So thank you, thank you so much, William Miller, um, and uh, he's uh, he's having a good run of podcasts too uh, for the Woody Allen Pages podcasts. Um, yeah, check it out. Before filming this episode, he also did Stardust Memories. I haven't listened oh, really? to it yet, but I have oh, to listen nice. to that. Uh, so, so y- the, the, there's the thing, and I should listen to that because what I saw on Twitter is that he's surprised by the love Stardust Memories gets now from fans, mm. and I assume that he <laughs> doesn't share that love so much. So I could be wrong. I'm I'm gonna listen to his podcast. But uh, that's a rich movie. Stardust Memories is a rich movie. Zedek, I could listen I to think... that episode. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You could listen to that episode. Now, I could listen seen, to that episode. Yeah, uh, Stardust Memories. But uh, Zelig, in a, I think in a tamer level, uh, and uh, 
um, it's still as rich mm-hmm. as uh, as you know as a film filmmaking experience. It was as rich as uh, Stardust Memories, if not more, because of the technical mm-hmm. challenges that they were able to pull off uh, and uh, overcome. Um, the, Zelig is lighter, definitely, but it is still substantial, and I uh, I think. If I reassess my uh, opinion, this is gonna be one of my top five. But we'll know more nice. about that. Uh, we're we're gonna talk about the '80s after 1989, um, mm-hmm. and uh, let's see where where your list takes us. Q. So we've seen <laughs> uh, Stardust Memories that. now. We've seen Stardust Memories, Midsummer Num- Summer Nights, uh, Sex Comedy, Sex Comedy, Zelig. Zelig. Correct. The next one is Broadway Danny Rose, also starring Mia Farrow and uh, Woody <laughs> Allen. Um, you're gonna see a lot of Mia Farrow. Speaking of Mia Farrow, what do you think of her performance? This, I think she's much more comfortable acting with Woody in this film yes, now yeah, than the yes. first one, it, right? It, it, it showed like that she was, she had a lot more chemistry with him. Yeah, compared yeah, right. to the last one, yeah. but. I still want to see her unpacked, like really comfortable. Uh, oh, so okay. I, 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 I don't know if I'm gonna see that in the next coming films, but I'm looking for, I'm looking forward to that. Well, to to see Broadway her kind Danny of like, Rose. yeah, Broadway <laughs> Danny Rose is a film you should see. Uh, he's gonna go back to his black and white filmmaking ways. This is kind of this is part black and white and black uh, and, and part colored. Uh, yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. he's gonna go full on black and white again on uh, Broadway Danny Rose and uh, let's see what Q thinks of that film but uh, that's Zelig for now and uh, any last thoughts on this film Q before we say goodbye uh, to our audience for today not that I <laughs> but remember the, that bit of trivia that I mentioned a while ago that um, yeah it it took so long to match Woody Allen to old newsreel footage. Yeah, uh, he managed to film a Midsummer Night's comedy yeah. and Broadway Danny Rose. Oh, he was filming Broadway Danny Rose. He was able to film and complete Broadway Midsummer Danny Nights Rose. and Broadway Danny Rose. Apparently, wow! <laughs> Before he was able to kind of release this movie. It's amazing how <laughs> prolific this guy was. <laughs> That's a like, span of I think two years. Two two years. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's filmed three films. <laughs> that's oh that's, that's, man. that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. And it's not just like it's not as if he was making like really low budget films that you could shoot, <laughs> yeah. right? Like it's even like, Midsummer Nights, that was a lot of effort they constructed exactly, the set. Exactly. It was like it was a beautiful film. It was period. He had yeah. the the flying bicycle. He had. It's not like it's not like he just went out. These and, these, these aren't low budget films at yeah, all. I mean, yeah, like even even the cast. It, it's not 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 at that all. That is amazing. <laughs> that is so, amazing. <laughs> so yeah, I can't wait to see Broadway Danny Rose. Much respect. <laughs> Much respect. <laughs> I mean, we 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 can even even complete. One full-length film in a year. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's creating three in the span. Creating three simultaneously. Jesus Christ! And not just directing it, because like directing is one thing, you know. He acting was writing, yeah. acting, <laughs> Act- and directing in all of these. For sure. Oh, like, oh. Uh, wow. Well, yeah. 1984's Broadway Danny Rose is next, but we have to say goodbye for now. I hope you enjoyed the discussion. And we'll see you again next week. <laughs> <laughs> that was today's episode of Woody Allen's Decades in Film, a podcast about the incredible filmography of one of the most prolific and most controversial filmmakers of our time. Join us again next week for another deep dive on the art of Woody Allen. <laughs>